party of two. I need a party of two. Uh, yeah, creepy guy over here. <laughs> that was weird. Welcome to Party of Two, a Parks podcast here live on the internet. We're not live, but we no. are on the internet. Welcome to the show. I'm one of your hosts, the internet's Mark B. Donica. And I am your other host, Andrea Donica. I told you, I told you this and I posted a picture about it. Um, but I was really silly on uh, what we order food for for Critical Role, and I was just in a really silly mood, and put the Internet's Mark B. Donica as my name for <laughs> for the food. And then when I got it, it said the Internet's Mark B. Donica with a bunch of exclamation points, which I didn't put on. Mm. So clearly, somebody at that particular restaurant has been on the internet and has seen that I exist there. I mean, no. uh, yeah. <laughs> Highly unlikely. <laughs> uh, but welcome to a show where we talk about theme parks and theme park happenings. It is getting to be the spooky Halloween season as provided by that ride attendant who's still looking at us a little weird. So we're going to finish our co- we're going to finish our conversation. We'll be right. We'll be right over He's with you. He's really giving us the side eye right now. Are you sh- OK, let's let's just kind of go off into a corner so we're not holding up the line, at least, because I've been feeling kind of bad about that. All right, let's let. OK, we're going to we're going to pause real quick and we'll be right back. Okay, now that uh, we we're farther away from that person <laughs> and time has passed, we're um, today we're going to talk a little bit about our most recent trip to the happiest place on earth, uh, Disney, because they're currently in Halloween time, and it's the least scary non-child aimed Halloween activity. Because there's a little bit in between. There's a, you could get yeah. a little scared. There are no scare zones. There are no mazes. But some of the ride uh, attractions are designed ca- can have a little bit of a extra spookiness to them. It is a family friendly type spookiness. There's still a degree of spookiness that can freak out your little ones, depending on how sensitive they are. But Children can already be terrified at Disneyland, let's be honest. Um, The amount of screaming, crying children that we see just on a daily basis there is kind of normal and can be especially terrifying just to meet a costumed character. (laughs) Yeah, but uh, at at least with this, we were... California Adventure was pretty unsettling. Yeah. Once it hit nighttime, there was this ominous music and wind blowing through. And and Oogie Boogie just taking control of everything. It was really, really bizarre. But he was also just really excited to have you come visit. But every now and again, as you're waiting to get through the turnstiles for California Adventure, he would make different noises, sometimes just be chuckling or it would just have a little quip here or there. And you never knew exactly when his voice was going to come back on. So suddenly it'd be like, huh, whoa. I wasn't ready for that. Nope. Sort of a thing. Yeah. But uh, we're, we're going to talk about some of the Halloween offerings that, that we got to enjoy, some of the food, some of the, the rides. We got to experience the, the Guardians nighttime uh, Halloween bit. Guardians Monsters After Dark, I believe is what it's called. I think it's, it's just called Guardians After Dark or something, mm, but I, I could be wrong. There was a monster. Yes. But uh, we wanted to start with a non-Halloween experience that we had. And and this comes from a friend of the show, Belinda Garcia, who is from Geeks of Color, a wonderful website, and, uh, and got to do a, a show with her a couple of weeks ago, met her at RTX, also a park head. I saw so many pictures of Disneyland on her feed that I thought that she was a local, but she wasn't. She's just a Disney file. Oh, nice. But a couple of weeks ago, she experienced the Lamplight Lounge, which is the new Pixar-themed restaurant that took over Ariel's Grotto, and uh, what was the bar called? Cove Bar. Yeah. And she wanted to know what our experience was like. We kind of documented our experience, but we had something very unique happen. We were, it was. Never had this happen just at any restaurant, really. Interesting. Yeah. So we went, uh, we spent the whole day with our friends, Robbie and Stacy. And by the time we sat down, we hadn't had a full meal. There's so many sugary offerings for for Halloween time, Mm -hmm. so we were just kind of trying to snack throughout the day. But even so, we had the uh, Bengal barbecue, which wasn't necessarily a sugary snack. We probably should have gotten like two additional skewers, though, for it to 
go over t- more. And Robbie was having a bit of a time. A little bit. He he needed some more protein and vegetables. Yeah, too much too much tum things. Yeah. Too many things that mess with the tum. But ultimately, it's been one week. It's been a really long time <laughs> since we since we had an actual meal. We were really excited for it. Really stoked for it. Sat down. We each had really comfy chairs. And something that I need to point out here. So it's impossible to get a reservation at this place, and I had the foresight to just jump onto Disney dining as soon as I could because we were going for Mark's birthday and I wanted to try to get us there. And the only time that they had the moment that I logged on was for 9.35 p.m. for a reservation. So I took it. That was the only option and nothing earlier ever freed up. Um, But uh, at least we were able to uh, relax in a very comfortable, chill setting. Yeah. Uh, Everything was very, very promising. Uh, The food and the drinks, just incredible. I I want to talk about our our, our food experience, too, before the madness. I I know. (laughs) (laughs) So why don't you tell the listeners what you had? So you you got to start if you're if you're doing a Pixar thing you got to start with the short and that's one of the <laughs> cocktails on the list I wanted to start with the short because I thought it was good there's they had a lot of gin based drinks that I noticed I don't know if that's a preference of the team or if that's a thing uh, hmm. I don't I don't know why but there's a lot of gin there was I think there was a tequila drink two, two. Rum drinks. there were two tequila drinks okay. There was a whiskey drink, uh, but some <laughs> two whiskey drinks. I think they were trying to do two. Just double up, double them yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I, I noticed. I'm sorry. It's it's been a weekend, but um, oh yeah. I I really enjoyed the. Actually, I'll I'll say this. I wish that they had more themed drinks based on the movies. Yeah, me be- too. Because they had them based on production, and that was cool. And the drink that I was supposed to get second was a fun inside joke that really only that editors can really understand and that's not necessarily just a video editor but editor but uh picture animation audio whatever anybody who deals with files really and actually no i would say students too not modern students with with digital files that was called um the the final fix the final with a fix the final with a fix so that's an allusion to uh something something final final two Final three, <laughs> the real final, the last time. It's and I I can't tell you how many times I've done that personally. Mm-hmm. So I was really looking forward to that drink. But while we were we were, we ordered our second round of drinks, we all got some appetizers. We got the tuna uh, shrimp and tuna roll. Is that what it was? Tuna, yeah, something like yeah. that. And that was the most regular thing on the menu but really really delicious. Mm-hmm. And considering that right now Disneyland Resort. Um, at least up until this point for quite some time, didn't have any sort of sushi offerings. For me, that was really exciting. Um, There used to be a restaurant in one of the hotels that had a uh, a Japanese sushi restaurant. I think the Disneyland Hotel proper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I can't remember which... I I I don't think... Yeah, but... but yeah, it, it was gone since, uh, I think, the late 2000s. And, uh, it's been a while. Yeah. Because like, it, it was only there for a little while once we started going regularly. Yeah, exactly. And then... It was always... It was kind of expensive for sushi, so we never hit it up. And, and then on top of that, I wasn't really into sushi at the time. I didn't really get into it until probably right around the time it was done. Mm. So it wouldn't have been smart. Yeah. But... Uh, on on top of that, let's see. I'm, I'm taking a look at potato it. skins. Yeah. Uh, oh our, my Robbie gosh. Robbie ordered some potato skins, and it was you. Yuka- and y'all are gonna get hungry, and I don't apologize. Uh, Yukon gold potatoes, not not skinned, but it was they re- retained most of the potato. There yeah. was only a little bit kind of scooped out, but it had a Greek yogurt and capers topping, which was supposed to replace the. The sour cream. Yeah, but like that was that was on one side. So they, they put the 
sauces, um, just kind of splatter them on both sides of the plate. So you can kind of scoop and mix whatever you like. So that yogurt one was on one side and the other was kind of like a, a potato, uh, potato, tomato based. Paprika. Um, yeah, aioli. it was a little, a little spicy yeah. and just the, they complemented each other so well. And with the potato, just the magic. I didn't think that they could make a potato better. I, the the lightness of the yogurt compared to what a sour cream would offer. And I don't like capers most of the time, but it was the closest thing to a perfect bite that I could imagine. And definitely it will be impossible to go to that restaurant and not get those. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, and so far with all of the stuff that we tried at the restaurant, the only thing that I think I'll be shaking up in the near future is the drinks. Because everything else that we ordered... I, I can't imagine getting anything but because mm-hmm. the, the, that was our first course. And what was the, what was the drink that you got? I got the six tentacles, which is a nod to Finding Dory um, for our uh, our favorite uh, squid. Septipus. <laughs> Hank. Hank. <laughs> yeah. um, and that was oh, so good. So good. I was waiting for... Um, it, it, the next drink that I had ordered was uh, something related to Brave. Um, it had Celtic in the yeah, name. Yeah. Um, oh, you got um, it's it's a version of uh, since since we're not cussing here. There's there's a cocktail called the Suffering Bee, and mm-hmm. it's it's a Disney's version of it because they also had a version of a Bloody Mary. Yeah, but they didn't. They, even though in the description they they make reference to like the blood a bloody mary mix they didn't call it a bloody mary because it's a it's a version of it just like this is a version of a suffering bee but i was really i was interested in trying that too because those are really refreshing yeah and uh oh i i also ordered the lobster nachos which is a very famous holdover from cove bar that basically all of the fans demanded to keep around and disney was happy to oblige um but i ordered that as my meal Mm -hmm. um absolutely delicious and it was actually my first time trying it kind of a straggler but very very good had a line oh yeah no it was was impossible impossible just to show up and get in even under any circumstance really yeah but uh, Stacy got the chicken sandwich. Mm-hmm. And then Robbie and I each got the ratatouille because you can't go to a Pixar place. They have ratatouille on the menu. You've got to get it. Yeah. There's no way to not. And the only way that I can describe <laughs> the flavors in this dish. Uh, first of all, I'll say if you are ever at this restaurant and you have any sort of a passing appreciation for ratatouille as a movie... They did it. They pulled off the exact same feeling that Anton Ego gets when he takes a bite into Remy's Ratatouille. And I, th- it sounds ridiculous. I, 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 it sounds ridiculous to, to say out loud, to think about. I didn't want to say it. And then when I looked over and saw that Robbie's eyes started like watering a little bit and were a little red and noticed that mine were doing the same... I couldn't I couldn't help it and and it it's an experience. It's so bizarre to say that about food. You know, for me I I prefer going for the meat before I go for the vegetables. No same. And I was really happy that somebody had meat so that I could have some. <laughs> I I wanted to get the ratatouille but Mark and I have this thing where we don't order the exact same thing, so if we want to share two different items on the menu with each other we can um i got i got one bite initially after i saw mark having his moment and i didn't think that i would have that experience with a primarily vegetable dish but i swear to god it it just it felt it was comfort food. Mm. Comfort food in the best way. It, it was hearty, but still light. Mm-hmm. And just so delicious. Uh, everything was just perfectly seasoned and complemented. At the bottom of the stack of 
beautiful, beautiful vegetables laid together. There is this brata cheese yeah, glob. Yeah, a big, a big, yeah, glob's a good word. And it, it helps add a little bit extra to the ratatouille and the, the mouse and rat part of the of hmm. the movie. So I don't think it was... it. I think it takes a lot of the inspiration from the movie. It does. It has a similar presentation. There's like a zucchini or a cucumber, uh, like spiral. It's zucchini. Spiral cut zucchini. Yeah. So it it there's that thin slice, uh, hearty vegetable that you get. But everything else is kind of chunks. And I just I built up a couple of really good bites and and was just aghast, blown away, couldn't believe that i had the opportunity to eat this dish when of all of a sudden (laughs) we start hearing alarms and lights going off and we're used to the pomp and circumstance of disney we're fans of the trader sam bar (laughs) where you order a particular drink and it's like oh oh shipwreck and then you see the this boat sink in in the bottle and keep in mind this restaurant is brand new we haven't really done any research about it so and and this restaurant is highly themed. There's decorations all around where you really feel like you are essentially at um a studio um luxury restaurant inside of Pixar. Mm-hmm. There's um all these different concept art and posters from the different movies that and they've it made. It looks like props, not necessarily yeah. just pictures of assets, but uh, Ernesto de la Cruz's guitar, the the boot from Wally, the class picture sign from Toy Story Three. So I kid you not, when we're listening to this alarm going off, we all kind of looked at each other and we're like, twenty three nineteen. Yeah, is it a twenty three nineteen? Because they had a, they have a twenty three nineteen uh, drink. I think it was non alcoholic, if I remember correctly. But even so, it's like, oh, somebody twenty three nineteen. Let's make this a big deal, and. When like the lights were flashing and and they looked like the emergency lights, they looked like the 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 fire alarm lights, but we were just like we didn't know what was going on. And then our server came out from behind a wall and was like, "Ah, no, we're good, everything's fine." And then somebody came out right behind her and was like, "We're not. Everybody, <laughs> please st- gather your things and leave the restaurant as quickly as possible." They did have an announcement over the PA that was synced in time with the. Al- with the alarms and the flashing lights saying there is an emergency please vacate the facility but even then we didn't know if it was a gimmick or not. exactly no and i mean the voice it's just it's so perfect disney gets the best voices for everything even for an emergency alarm so you don't really know to take it seriously it yeah. was very bizarre it's very bizarre <laughs> we were a company we were we we're all vacated out of the building and at this point it's like 10 20 10 30 yeah. Yeah, yeah and the park closes at 11 so we're standing around kind of wondering what's going on the crowd of people that were inside is slowly dissipating nobody None of the staff really had any information. They were trying to figure out what the problem was and didn't want to send anybody in a tizzy. You know, they everybody everybody acted very accordingly. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the restaurant staff, everybody was was super friendly, super helpful. And calm and collected. Mm-hmm. And and we didn't the like we were more concerned of like we just had these life changing experiences with food and we we were just like, wait, does that mean we can get a fresh do we get fresh plates? Can we we get to experience this all over again? <laughs> this sounds great. But then as time was slowly going on, people were leaving. We were talking to more and more people. And it just seemed like at the time, you know, the park's closing real soon. The sun's getting real low. And uh, we, we didn't know what was going to happen. So we just wanted to make sure, like, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't know what to do. So we ended up uh, dispersing. Heading over to City Hall, well, not City Hall, but uh, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, we were informed that uh, due to the emergency circumstance, we would not be charged for the meal, and if we were, that we could contact somebody and get that taken care of. We, we dealt with a, a wonderful lead named Steve that helped put us at risk, or not at risk, I'm sorry, helped put our minds at ease. Thank you, Steve. Which was gracious, Steve. And it was just a really weird way to end the night how bizarre how bizarre we we had a really long day we so long. we haven't done a full day 
And we say full day 8 to 11. Not 8 to midnight or 8 to the end of a special event, but that's a full day. I mean, technically, we left like after midnight. I think we were in the car around 1230, so kind of technically. Yeah, around there. Yeah. But <clears throat> one of the... So it was a day of a Mickey's Halloween party. So Disneyland closed at 7. And so we bum-rushed and got everything that we wanted to get done in Disneyland proper, which we were a well-oiled machine. And something that we experienced for the first time, which helped us maintain that well-oiledness, was the new mobile ordering feature on on the app. And I couldn't, I can't, no, the fact it's so new Nobody knows, essentially nobody knows about it, unless you're, you're a dedicated park follower, really. Because all of the times that we used it, the crowds were, were slim to none. But we we circumvented so many lines. Oh, yeah. I think one of the places that could use it but won't, because it'll just make it even more terrifying, is the mint julep bar. Yeah, no, they, they don't even, ha- they don't have the space. They don't have enough windows for that, exactly. truthfully. And it's something that would help, but it's a lot of the bigger restaurants that have it. Yeah. The, I, maybe because it's undergoing a refurbishment, but the, the corn dog cart doesn't have one, but they may get, they may get it because they have two windows. But I, that would be... That's the dream, that's right? The dream. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of great places that, have the space to do it uh pizza port doesn't have it but tomorrowland terrace has it at least one place per land has it bengal barbecue i think is the biggest steal oh yeah because there's so many times when we've waited in that line that line always gets long without fail only gotten a couple things and then been like oh we're still hungry but we're not gonna wait in that line yeah that this that we it circumvented that we we could have if we wanted to. Mm-hmm. So let, when when did the treats start? Because we had we had breakfast at, at Carnation, and what was our next thing after that? Was it Bengal barbecue after that? I I don't remember. I mean, we were just flying throughout the day. So we went. We did Space Mountain. Then we went right. over and we did Pirates, and then we went back and did star tours and then we came back for haunted mansion holiday and we did or no we did splash mountain and then haunted mansion holiday right after that and that's when we got uh uh, we got our beignets pumpkin the pumpkin spice beignets Mm -hmm. classic those have been around for a little while but anything pumpkin spice that that disney throws out isn't super overt but is but it's pretty damn good pretty damn good yeah and after that we did Bengal barbecue, mm-hmm. where we had the spam masubi, which is a Halloween time special, but disappointingly, it's not warm. It's not fresh. They make it off site. They keep they keep it cool. The thing that they put on the plate was a kind of wet masubi wrapped in plastic wrap next to a next to slaw that was pretty good, a little smelly. I liked the slaw, it was but good. I I enjoy ginger straight up so i'm i'm a little more intense that way so i don't know what made this a halloween time special like it wasn't necessarily spicy i think americans just in general typically view spam as a scary thing so that (laughs) might be (laughs) the theming there um well it was a uh, excuse me it wasn't a spam masubi because that's a brand it was a spiced ham masubi which can be shortened and romanized to spam okay but that if it was warm i probably would have liked it a lot more it was still good but it was really hot Mark, like yeah. keep that in mind. I think they were also just trying to be nice for the masses and trying to actually get people to be okay with eating this food in the sweltering heat. It was bad. Yeah, it was really hot. It was. I th- we topped off at like ninety four. Yeah, 95, somewhere around something there. Like that. But we we were running around trying to stay hydrated. What do we get next? We got uh, Jolly Holiday. Yeah. Did you, you got a, what did you get? That was the seasonal item. I got the pumpkin spice cheesecake. Yes. Which probably was the spiciest of the pumpkin spice offerings that I tried. And I liked it very, very much. Yeah. Um, Nice and cool. 
not too heavy. It, it was kind of, it was like a layered cheesecake. Um, so it, it was nice. It came in uh, a little, little circular item and uh, was easy to eat. Um, I, I enjoyed it very much. I, I really hope they keep that around um, for all of the uh, Halloween time offerings in oh, the future. Of I, sure I think it's uh, something that's definitely a keeper. Like, uh, for example, I appreciate the churros because we did end up having... Um, the pumpkin spice churro. Yeah, that was when we went over to California Adventure. And I mean, I, I, I like the different flavors and uh, I like the sparkles that they put on there, which is always fun for me. But... I I will ultimately choose flavor over um, overall look. So would you say that the the cake was a little bit more subdued? It wasn't as overt. Like, yeah. Well, of those, so those are the three pumpkin spice I- items that we had. Mm-hmm. I wanted to get the the pumpkin bread pudding that they yeah. had at the uh, Pacific Wharf, but we ran out of time, and then that weird thing with dinner. So what was out of those three? What was your favorite pumpkin spice item? The cheesecake, hands down. Yeah. Hands down. The churros, I think, are, are good to grab and go. You don't need a fork or a spoon or anything. So I, I think they're good to grab and go with. The beignets, I think, were subtle enough. Yeah, they. I would say those. that was like the most generic of the pumpkin spice for people that are like, I, I kind of like pumpkin spice, but it, it's okay. I think... They also kept in mind that that would possibly be like a shareable item between like a group of people. Yeah, probably. Um, so I, I think that makes sense. I still miss the dipping sauces for the beignets. For the beignets yeah. And I really feel like that could have helped. Though I will say that the beignets were perfectly soft mm. and moist. However, the churro was a little tough. To me, I thought it was undercooked. In the right way. Sort of like mm. how there's a little bit of uncooked cookie dough in the middle of a cookie. So yeah. into the churro. Because they're probably pumping them out so, so Crazy. much. Crazy. But it's weird that the churros have the dipping sauce. But yeah. the, the beignets don't. But uh, aside from that, uh, Stacy got a sweet potato hand pie, which I wasn't interested in. But I heard it was fine. Yeah, that, that was 100% her descriptor for it. I took a bite out of it. It's very much just just what the description is but it's basically a souped up pop tart yeah hand pie hand pie <laughs> a non, non-brand affiliated day and hand pie lots of marshmallows on top of it ridiculous I'm amount of marshmallows on it i'm really wondering if they plan on keeping that through thanksgiving just because it reminds me of a thanksgiving dish more than a halloween dish well i think it's more of just fall yeah, in general and probably. sweet potato being a fall thing and then I got the cookies and cream mummy macaroon, which was really good. It was sort of like the perfect Oreo. Yeah. It had all of the Oreo-ness to it, but it wasn't like a hard cookie. The The macaroons that they dough that they use is really soft. So it was, it was nice and sort of effortless. And I don't aside from the the flavor and the it being a cool snack for a hot day Mm -hmm. the only thing that sort of left me any evidence was that the mummy frosting was melting onto my finger but i would i would recommend that and then you recommending the the pumpkin uh, cheesecake or the pumpkin cake or whatever it was it the the jolly holiday that's that's what we recommend from there that's the place to be so in terms of experiences Mm -hmm. in disney their theming isn't as overt and once you get into the halloween party that's when the stuff starts to come out you see the mickey ghosts everywhere that are the trick-or-treat places but other than that the only theming is localized really to Frontierland, which has the the halloween tree and then ghost galaxy and nightmare but nightmare is half christmas so <laughs> in terms of uh, in terms of uh atmosphere n- no emphasis on fear more atmos than fear what it's spooky it's it? It, 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 it's it's a little <laughs> spooky for someone that 
I, I'm speaking for myself on this, for someone that doesn't handle scary super well, it's probably like as comfortable as I can get, but it's definitely more terrifying when you don't know what's going to happen. We'd been on Ghost Galaxy since its inception, mm. but this was the first time that we were going on Guardians After Dark. Well, I, I want to I switch, switch over to, to Guardians yeah, in a yeah, sec, but just... It- but California Adventure just overall felt scarier to me when we walked in, and it does sound like Disney is really trying to have that be the primary park for Halloween offerings. But even with that change that's going to be happening, and next year that's probably where the Halloween party is going to be, Yeah, it seems like the infrastructure for California Adventure is more open to the theming of more places because before guardians happened there was the hollywood tower had the extra spooky overlay Mm -hmm. and then the the bats in the belfry have only been the past couple of years the oogie boogie thing has only been the past couple of years the headless horseman's only been the past couple of years cars land that was two years ago the year after they started doing christmas they did halloween but it's they per capita have more halloween decorations in California Adventure, and I think it's more set up to be it. I don't know if Disney. Ca- I don't. I don't know unless you really try. I don't know if you can make Disneyland scary. Hmm. Because they're all of the imagery is so familiar, even with some of the stuff that isn't necessarily directly tied to films or of any or any sort of a cinematic world or whatever. You there's not enough space. Whereas with California Adventure, having all of Hollywood Boulevard be this creepy wind tunnel of, you know, I I can imagine the park closing and being in that empty park seems a lot scarier than Disney where you're just sort of amazed at all of the beauty of the landscaping that there is. California Adventure, they've been spending a lot, they spent a lot more time making just a little bit scarier and unsettling and got to hand it to it at the same time i don't know if that will change once the halloween party moves because now that they're trying to attract this the younger audience is all of that stuff going to stay because ghost galaxy is the scariest thing at disneyland yeah when it comes to and not to say that that it's terrifying because especially at this point we've gotten used to it even though the party that was behind us we're terrified by every single step, especially because we were going a little bit faster than the animations. So stuff was appearing right as we were driving by, which was perfect for the people behind us. Yeah. But ultimately, it's still fun. I still wish that they would go back and make another pass with the music. It, it's gotten a little overly midi for me, the it's way that been. it is. I, I know, but I kind of liked it when it first came out. I yeah. was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and now I'm like, okay, this is starting to show its age just a little bit. Like, <laughs> let, let's just tweak it a little. However, I will say that that um, hand that tries to grab you during that dip is still one of my favorite things. Does it get you? Oh, yeah. It gets me every single time. I'm always screaming like a baby. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, for Indiana Jones, the snake is back, baby. Yeah. It's a perfect time for, for a spectacular voyage. Yeah. So that, that was a, a nice little surprise. We got lucky in some lines because rides had closed and we showed up right after they opened back up and we essentially walked on Indy. The only yeah. time we stopped was in the, the safety room, but that made sense. But then after that, what was the other one that we that we walked right on? Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, oh, Little Mermaid. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's not as impressive. <laughs> well, uh, no, but I mean, we had been kind of hovering around the area for a while waiting for it to open up. And we were finally walking away like, well, I guess we're not going to go on Little Mermaid today. And then, bam, like we literally saw them just open it up so we were one of the first people in line which was kind of cool yeah you don't don't have that um experience so often no it's to me that's more of like a six flags sort of a thing where you're man it's been a while but running to running to a coaster first thing in the morning and being the first people on 
and not necessarily have it was having next to an empty car or being running right into the first uh, row and going right on and just starting fresh it it gives me that sort of a feeling but with all of the terror and the fear and the heat and the tiredness that we had we wanted to wait we well we got fast passes for the night time of guardians we waited in line for guardians and we walked right on that we got right through there and probably only waited about 10 15 minutes yeah which is unheard of and it was projected for 30 35 or 40 yeah but um, we we made it over r- about an hour before all of the crowds started migrating over we timed it perfectly and when we got off of the ride line was just far crawling out just like we're used to it Mm. so that that was kind of lucky we we were so efficient that we were walking slower not just because we were tired but because it was more of a what do we do what like we have to wait for this fast pass to start. The only ride that we wanted to get on that we didn't because of lines and because of fast pass allowances and things like that was Radiator Springs. But other than that, we got a fast pass for the Nighttime Guardians. We got a fast pass for the Incredicoaster, which we went on at night for the first time. And that's the optimum time to go on that ride. Yeah, 100%. That's when you want to go. Mm-hmm. And uh, the effects just read a lot better. Yeah. And it's a lot harder to see them coming. Yeah. Especially, I would say any of the ones that poke out, in that that poke out into the tubes, which is the only thing that I'll say about them, because then you don't see the light behind them and the shadows that affects and and things like that. But a much better experience at night. It's yeah. still a great coaster, and and I say just because. You're on California Screaming with the Incredibles soundtrack. You can just close your eyes and enjoy the ride. But at night, it's definitely, definitely the best. And if, if you're going anytime soon, go at night. Just wait for nighttime. Absolutely. Yeah. The Guardian's nighttime experience, we hadn't experienced before. It came around last year. It was before we got our passes. We got our passes right after that. Or we renewed our passes right after that and we were pretty busy in the fall. And wow. <laughs> <laughs> the I like the experience that it you're supposed to ride on it twice. Yeah. If you want to get the whole experience, you ride it during the day, you ride it at night, and it's one through line story, two different ride experiences in the same place really super cool and i dug it i like the the daytime one a lot better even though they figured out a way to make it fun even though it's scary yeah i was absolutely freaking out in line because i was just like what what's gonna happen are they going to are they gonna do scare actors here what what's it gonna be Hmm. and uh had absolutely no idea what was going on. I will say I did kind of miss seeing the other main characters. Yeah. Um, because this becomes just a Rocket and Little Groot experience. Mm. Um, though the one way, at least in terms of story, that I can justify it is Rocket is a jerk. And uh, probably the other Guardians would be like, don't don't manipulate these people. They already helped us. But at the same time, I wonder if it was Rocket covering his his butt, being mm. like, "Oh, hey, where's Groot? Oh, he's just over here. Um, we're gonna go on a little ride. I'll be back in a second. Oh, I messed up." And just in in the way that that Rocket does was really standoffish. But we don't know. We never we didn't get that scene. We don't get it. But uh, it we have it features an exclusive track from Tyler Bates, who is the composer for the guardians films and it's this punk uh pop punkish song about that just a it tells the story of the ride so it's not necessarily like it, it's a different vibe but the tone and the presentation of it helps helps keep it fun and i'm sad i'm a little sad at the the lack of monsters it, it's it's more of a boss monster type yeah. of a thing but it's it's still fun it's still cool but you definitely like you said i i miss the the other characters as well but 
it's still fun and if you're if you go during halloween it's a must to to do both versions of the ride absolutely absolutely um and i think it's really cool that they figured out a way to tell the story even further by having it be two parts in the same day Mm -hmm. that becomes a little bit trickier with lines but it's it's definitely worth doing um and uh, I've never seen another attraction do something like that. So props to the Imagineers for coming up with that and doing it. It's a lot of fun. Especially for a ride that usually has a really long line. This keeps it popular and keeps people in that area of the park. You have to decide, oh, do we wait later? Do we wait now? Do we... It's, it's a... You visit first thing in the morning... Wait for the fast passes to come down, get a fast pass, and then enjoy the rest of your day. But it's it's worth it. And I th- and do you think it's scarier than Ghost Galaxy? I mean, we we have experience with Ghost Galaxy, so you know it's not as fresh, right? But I think the experiences of a drop ride compared to a roller coaster puts just gen- it. Guardians is a scarier ride in general. Exactly. Well, <laughs> that's my feeling. Drop rides are just way more terrifying. Mm-hmm. Even when you go on a ride enough to sort of predict and know which drop cycle you use, it could still go a second earlier or you you can, you know, your your body can only be trained so much to all of that falling. You still fall. You know, it's not like, "Oh, I know how this is all going to be. My butt's not going to leave my seat the entire time." No, nah, but <laughs> nah, but <laughs> when it comes to scary stuff, Andrea and I we're quite punchy. So when it when it's things <laughs> like scare actors, scare zones, not scary farm, Universal, uh, uh, Terror Trams, and and Horror Nights, and and Six Flags Fright Nights, not not fans. And nope. and it's it we're sucks. a liability. We are, and it's not just it it what what I don't like about it is it's a detriment because we're fans of the technology. We're fans of what the actors do. We've had friends that were scare actors. So many friends that we've <laughs> gone to college with, mm-hmm. and they they do it every single year, and we want to support them, but it's like, man, I don't want you to pop out at me, and then I accidentally punch you in the face. Yeah, especially... or And get, then get kicked out of the park mm-hmm. on top of D- it. Depending on... Depending on the person, I can be a target because people want to try to scare the big guy. Yeah. And people want to try to scare the cute girl. So depending on the actors, we we are targets. And we recognize that. So we're not going to put ourselves in harm's way. And we're not going to put other people in harm's way. Yeah. So the I, I respect everybody that goes out, that love haunts. There's a friend of mine that... that literally took a travel around the around the country to visit as many haunts as possible and and i really want to talk to him about it because he's a really big theme park friend too and i, ho- I hope to have him on the show i'll i'll talk to him and see if if maybe it i, I i'd like to have you there too but if 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 it's not possible to to have all of us there if, hey i think it would be great to get uh Perspective. Their, yeah, their expertise and uh, experience for that. Cool. Yeah, I'll I'll yeah. talk to him, but uh, yeah, we're <laughs> we do our best to stay away from those sort of things. I've I've watched the videos of all of the 2018 maps uh, and and mazes and things of that nature, and and I'm like, man, I would punch that person. I would punch that person. <laughs> I would probably shoulder tackle that person, but. <laughs> seeing some of the effects is is really really cool so i'll 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 talk around to to some haunt friends and and see who that who who we can get on and and talk to but um this i think is the scariest that we'll that we'll do as a couple (laughs) and uh i i don't know i'm excited i'm excited to for the season i like the flavors i like the tastes that's probably why we talked about food a little bit more mm-hmm. but do you have any final things to say about halloween time 2018 um experience everything while you can and uh again this is something we don't experience but something that i love hearing is that the mazes that are around constantly cycle or are updated to different things Mm -hmm. um i think it's really really cool that 
Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios Hollywood is having a Stranger Things maze mm-hmm. this time. And um, hey, go Netflix, yeah, right? Yeah, go Netflix. I don't know what other se- what other series they could do, but Stranger Things is a good fit. It's it's a perfect fit for Universal, mm-hmm. uh, especially with the E.T. feel and Goonies, etc. The, Just... the Super 8 vibe. Yeah. So it's that, Poltergeist, Halloween 4. There's a, a Universal Monsters maze that sort of updated looks for them for like dracula's kind of the host of it but sort of a way that disney 90s certain songs for phantasmics or, or things or different shows were phantasmics the, yeah something like that where it's it oh we know what you're trying to do but don't <laughs> they they update some of the classic bila lugosi lines just and they to be legitimately or in an attempt to be legitimately creepy and they don't work but you, g- you gotta go og with that and you, he did it the right way the first time you don't have to make it creepy you can make it quiet and, yeah. and build the atmosphere and don't have to make it dracula with a bloody mouth anyway whatever uh <laughs> <laughs> we're we like the halloween season we don't like punching fellow actors but uh they're just trying to get paid and have some fun yeah and and i didn't I, <laughs> sorry andrea i didn't want to mention it but the the guy has been like slowly very like <laughs> barely taking barely taking steps over he's he's a lot closer than i want him to be and he's just doing like the the tw- twilight zone tower of terror like wave to to bring us closer so mm-hmm. all right all right we'll wrap up we'll wrap up here we'll we'll be right back please turn around please turn so, all right he's Okay, he's turning around. Let's he's wrap up. He's giving me the side eye let's go, still. Let's go, let's go back. All right. Uh, tell the folks where they can find you online, and, and we'll get on this, this creepy, <laughs> creepy ride with this creepy, creepy man. You can find me at Make It Aqua on Twitter and Princess Briar Rose on Instagram. And you can find me at Mark Bidonica, uh anywhere Mark Bidonicas are sold, or on the internet, uh, Instagram, YouTube. We're still hammering out what's going on our YouTube page. So Party of Two... At, uh, on youtube go check it out and also party of two pod on twitter oh boy we're we're I'm, I'm a little freaked out but we're gonna figure out the rest of this halloween season but uh until next time for my lovely wife andrew donica this is the donica family saying mm. we'll see you next time